Hi everyone, in this video clip on topic 16, binomial and Poisson distribution is actually the start of a new topic that is on the statistics. They are all in total of, total of 5 chapters of statistics together with permutation and combination as well as probability which we have done in the last 2 chapters of the videos together forms the section B of paper 2. Now what is this uh, chapter about? We first introduce this concept of random variable. Okay. Now what actually is a random variable? Okay. From the definition given in your handout, it says that a random variable is a numerical variant whose value depends on chance. So this thing about random variable is a number okay, and it depends on chance. Let me just give an example. Suppose you throw a die or you roll a die and the outcome for the roll of the die would be either 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 or 6. Okay. These are numerical values here. If I let x to be defining as the score on the die, then x becomes a random variable because x takes values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 or 6 which are numbers and these numbers okay, comes along due to chance of throwing a die. Okay? Let me give you another example. Suppose you actually uh, look at the say throwing a die. And when you throw a dart, it's either a success or a failure. Okay? So I can actually say that it's either success or failure. Where success means you hit the target. And failure is when you miss the target. Clearly this S and F are not numerical values but we can always convert it to a random variable by saying let y be the number of hits okay. say out of 3 okay. so that means that if you miss the target for all the 3 times then y becomes 0 and when you hit once and misses two, y equals one, and so on and so forth. And if you hit all three on target, y becomes three. I've actually converted these non-numerical values into numerical values. And these values again depends on chance because it depends on experiment being carried out. So again, y is also a random variable. Okay? And things like a weight of an individual is also a random variable because it goes by chance. When I select a person randomly, the person's weight is becoming a, a chance situation. Right? So now let's look at uh, another definition. There is this thing called discrete random variable. Now what is actually a discrete random variable? It's a random variable definitely. And the word discrete tells you it takes values at point wise. Point wise. So that means that these are examples of a discrete random variables because it takes values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Okay? You can literally list down these values. Likewise, for this, it's a discrete random variable 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay? But what are random variables that are not discrete? We call them continuous random variables, which we will be doing in the next chapter. Example of continuous random variable would be like say the height of individuals, the weight of individuals. These are all um, continuous random variables. Okay. Now a probability distribution, okay, a probability distribution fully describes all the possible outcomes together with the probability of each happening. Okay, so what is probability distribution now? Another term that you need to know. Okay. 
It says that it describes all the possible outcomes together with the probability of each happening. And for it to be probability distribution, all the probabilities must sum up to 1. Okay, I'll give you an example. Suppose you roll a fair die. Okay, all right, fair die. And then the probability of, say, let x to be the random variable, say, for the score on the die. Okay, that's what you see from the example. Find the probability distribution for the score x on the die. So how do you find the probability distribution of x? Okay. To find the probability distribution of x is to list down all the possible probabilities for each of the outcomes. So we know that the chance that x equals 1 is 1 over 6. Okay. x equals to 2 is also 1 over 6. And so on and so forth. Until x equals 6 is also 1 over 6. Okay. So you can actually list them down in this manner. Or you can actually create a table out of it. Okay, to say x and the probability. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And the probabilities are 1 over 6, 1 over 6, 1 over 6, 1 over 6, and so forth. You notice that these values add up to 1, which is a requirement for probability distribution. Okay? But of course, you'll notice that also it's quite uh, not a feasible approach if the values can actually be much more than 6. So sometimes uh, x can take many, many values. It's quite a tough thing to actually list down all these on the table. And sometimes we use this thing called formula to help us to summarize these values. Example, uh, in this case, you can actually write down the probability distribution in this way. Okay. This also represents the probability distribution because it lists down all the probabilities that is always 1 over 6 when k takes values 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and 6. Okay. Last thing before we end this video is on this notation that you are supposed to represent. And it says that we denote the random variables by capital letters. Okay? Okay. This is a very, very important presentation issue. That means that, for example, you can see that I let y, capital Y, okay, y takes values, it's a, again, it's a random variable, so I represent by capital letter, you see, by capital letter as well, okay. And the values taken by this random variable will be the small letter for it. That means I can say the probability that x equals to small x. This small x is the value taken by this random variable. So when it's the value taken by the random variable, okay, it will be denoted as small x. Okay? So that when you present your answers, the teacher actually understand that you are looking at this random variable to represent capital letter and a small letter to take the values taken by the random variable. Okay? With that, I end my introduction on this random variable. In the next video clip, I'll go through a very, very popular kind of distribution that is called a binomial distribution. Thank you.